Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome to the inaugural Security Saturday. Uh, I don't know if you saw the logo. Uh, my my friend Tim created that. I have someone else who's created a logo, but I don't have it yet, so you'll get to see that logo when they send it to me, and uh, we'll alternate both logos. Before we get too far into it, you need to have the appropriate headgear. If you don't have your tinfoil hat, or if you do have it, go ahead and take it out and put that on now. Uh, in the absence of your tinfoil hat, a uh, colander uh, may work. So go ahead and, and make sure that you're wearing the appropriate gear for all this security stuff. Um, if you ever saw my uh, if you ever saw my video, my intro video, um, you know that at some point we were going to start getting into security. Uh, PCI is a huge driver um, for me. Um, and uh, I am not, I've got to get a bigger hat. My melon has gotten too large for this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my headgear down and I'll, I'll uh, take the heat on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that have happened in the last week um, in the security world. Then I'm going to show you a device. And I have lots of devices and lots of software and things that we use. Um, and eventually, I'm even going to get into manual things, you know, uh, manual pen testing on like WordPress websites and things like that. You can buy fancy software, but in my opinion, there's nothing like having a human look at this and a human do it. Um, a human can detect tripwires better than a machine. You know, a lot of these reports, a lot of these pen testing companies, they use a piece of software that they've licensed. And in my opinion, it... Um, you have a lot of false positives depending on which software is used. Uh, for example, if you're running Apache and it detects Apache 2.4, but if you're running Ubuntu, uh, there may be a, a you know a revision patch on there, but you will fail the scan just because it's 2.4 um, in some of the software. So I have a real problem with that. So whenever I'm doing real pen testing, I like to get my hands on it, actually verify the results. So we will get to some of that. This will be uh, weekly, and then, you know, we're going to get back to the config videos. Uh, somebody did send me a Cisco ASA 5505, so we've got uh, ASA to Edge Router and USG videos coming. coming. We've got Sonic Wall to USG and Edge Routers. We've got PFSense. We're going to do it all. You know, we're going to keep those configuration videos. That's, that's our bread and butter, and I love uh, everybody learning. So um, we'll uh, help close that skills gap that that doesn't, uh, you know, that some people say exists. I don't know if it does or not, um, but uh, we'll all learn together. So uh, the first thing, let's talk about some of the things that, uh, let's talk about some of the things that happened this week uh, that made the news. The one that is near and dear to my heart uh, because of PCI, this first one, and I'm going to put all the links to these down uh, so you can read the stories, is uh, Verifone. If you've ever been to uh, a store and they have the little uh, machine, you know, where you either insert your card or you swipe it and it says Verifone on it, this is the company that is the middleman for that, that hardware and that payment processing that exists there. Um, they are publicly traded, but they are investigating an internal breach of their own system and Krebs apparently and if you don't know who um, Krebs is he, uh, he's a, a researcher um, and uh, all kinds of interesting things happen with him because he's kind of out there uh, so I definitely recommend uh, bookmarking Krebs on security and going back and reading that but uh, if you read this you'll see back in January they sent an urgent email to their employees telling them that they must change their password they had you know the password policies um, and it come you know come to find out they are investigating a breach so when a company that is you know in charge of securing transactions you know hundreds of millions probably billions of dollars of transactions if I had to guess go through their equipment if a company like that takes a hit on the inside it does a lot it does a lot to their public image and their credibility um, so I'm sure they're taking this very seriously so check that out uh, the next thing that we're not going to talk about is the WikiLeaks vault 7 this is all over the place I'm not even going to touch it uh, I've been talking to a lot of people this week about it we've been searching and 
and researching. It's out there. We're, besides that it happened, I'm not going to touch it anymore, but I will um, put, a, put a link to it. Um, the next thing, Kaspersky Lab uh, has found a new malware discovered in the wild, and it wipes the machine, completely wipes the machine. So the uh, nuts and bolts, kind of how this thing works with a 10,000 foot overview is it comes in through a web browser uh, vulnerabilities. It gets stored in memory. It uses an advanced evasion technique and then it wipes the machine. And they're thinking that this is built on um, another piece of software that uh, took down uh, 35,000 uh, computers in 2012 um, from an oil company. So check this out check the stats as far as i know uh, it hasn't been seen in the states yet this is something that's in the middle east but if it's over there um it's probably you know these things are going to start trickling uh, our way soon so keep an eye on that this next one um, with all the news that that has been out there you know with the cia this one is actually about the department of of justice and I find this one interesting because if you read the story what it comes down to is that instead of disclosing in court how they uh, breached or hacked Tor to obtain information the Department of Just Justice actually dismissed a child pornography case so I don't know if you all remember Jared from Subway, him and his uh, crew, you know, um, and, and how big of a deal child pornography is. It is a real problem. Um, so to, to keep, you know, when you, you think about how big that problem is and the seriousness um, that exists there, to keep a technology secret safe, the Department of Justice dismissed a case against um, child pornographers. So um, you should uh, go ahead and read that. And then uh, the last news story that I want to talk about, this is something that keeps a lot of administrators awake at night. I'm constantly thinking about it. Uh, I get phone calls from other folks in the area because I have dealt with this, uh, which is ransomware. And for me, it all comes back to having some common sense things in place. And one of those common sense things, and I will tell you that my users are the best users in the world because if anything looks abnormal they're on the phone they're calling they're asking questions and we're taking a look at it and I could not ask for a better uh, group of users I really appreciate that but ransomware um, I have I have dealt with it in the wild um, and uh, thankfully um, it hasn't caused too much damage uh, one company that I worked with actually did pay the ransom uh, but it still took us uh, a week to decrypt to decrypt everything, and there was one machine that they did not pay the ransom on, so we just formatted everything. We got them back in business, and now we have layer uh, layered security, security in layers, um, and layers, and you know it involves you know hardware appliances and software and procedures and backups and all kinds of things to prevent that from happening again. And it may not prevent it from happening again because a large problem with uh, ransomware is it runs in the user space doesn't need any escalated privileges um, is, is that it can happen um, but how your plan works and how you can back out of that that's that's really the true test so uh, this story is about how the Pennsylvania Senate Democrats um, had ransomware on their machines so um, I'll link to that uh, it's similar to a story I don't have the link to, but if you do a Google search, there was a, a sheriff's office in Texas who lost years worth of evidence to ransomware. So I am going to post uh, all of these links down in the comments. And the next thing I want to talk about, um, this is kind of how I'm going to kind of do this you know after we gear up with the tinfoil hat we're gonna talk about a few stories from the week give you something to Google something to read something to digest and think about and then I'm gonna show you a hardware or a software device and then I'm gonna talk about a concept so we've gone to our links and so 
the next thing that I want to show you is a land turtle. And if you don't know what a land turtle is, it's created by Hack5, and the team over there, they're, they're brilliant. Um, they create tools that make uh, my job easier. And I'm not going to read you verbatim what this says. Um, you can go over to hack5.org, that's H-A-K, the number 5.org. I'll put a link to that down. But uh, what this is, a very uh, plain-looking device. It's actually a Linux PC. Um, that looks like an Ethernet adapter. So there's the USB part and uh, that's the Ethernet port and I am gonna do we will eventually get the videos on this. There's a whole repository, a whole community that uses these. There's all kinds of uh, videos out there. I'm gonna add my own to the mix. There are some things um, that I do that, that some people haven't posted videos about so I am gonna get to that uh, and if you know what this device is and or you've looked at it you'll see other devices and I do own a whole myriad of devices from hack5 so when you order it by the way I am not an affiliate for hack5 um, I just use their tools um, but I am gonna show you that when you order it it shows up you know in this and it shows up in a colored um, envelope and a lot of their tools or a few of their tools show up in these colored envelopes and that's because the uh, creator uh, used to be a phone freak and if you're familiar with the colored uh, boxes he kinda uses the colors of the envelopes to talk about that um, so when you get this it tells you as a quick guide you plug it in and um, I'll go ahead and plug it in real quick let's see if I can I'm gonna pause this I'm gonna move some desktop icons around we'll be right back we'll fire this thing up okay so there you can see uh, my desktop with the super crypt uh, or this I'm sorry it used to be called super crypt that's specter crypt um, we had to change the name to be uh, unique so specter crypt by the way there is a new version coming out a totally revamped version based on all the feedback uh, so that's gonna be out here in the next couple weeks uh, heads up it runs on Mac now so if you're a Mac user get in on the second beta um, likely everybody who gets in in that beta you're gonna get it for free uh, when we launch anyway back to the land turtle so we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna plug it into my PC and if you could see the business end of it the uh, Ethernet uh, the uh, lights booting up to let us know that it is uh, booting and so it takes about 30 seconds to boot once you plug it in and uh, the devices all come with these little cards that, that tell you and they give you a link to go out and, and see the videos. Um, and one thing that I like to use this for is uh, persistent SSH tunnels. So, um, but I'm also looking at how to build that functionality into other things like the Unify Cloud Key and okay and you can see that my PC found this and um, it is it comes up as a network adapter which is so so brilliant and it required no admin access it uses you know the built-in Windows um, stuff to uh, or the drivers to to load that and do I want to allow my PC to be discoverable yeah that's fine so um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open putty and there's a default IP address and everything in here so we'll we'll put this in here 172.16.84.1 and yes and the password is root and then there's a default or the username is root and there's a default password and now you can see we're logged into the device the first time we we log in it's gonna ask us for a new password and then we'll have to repeat it and then uh, we are gonna get a login prompt where we can figure it we can uh, look at the modules um, these are less than a uh, hundred dollars and they are uh, great for any uh, pen tester security testers toolkit so and you can look at the modules um, there are instructions out there how to um, write modules and things that go for this so um, you can actually check for updates 
It's going to go out. It says it's currently offline. But uh, check it out over at Hack5. And we will, like I said, we will be doing um, videos on that. When you exit the configuration screen, you can see Land Turtle by Hack5. We are now, um, we're now at the root prompt. So um, we can go to our uh, home directory. We can go back out. We can look at everything that's going on. It's got Linux on it. So, um, you know, check it out. Check it out. Add it to your arsenal. Um, there's a link. Like I said, I'm not an affiliate. Um, I just think they make really cool. Uh, they make really cool tools. So, that's the hardware for this week. Check it out. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Then the last thing that I want to talk to you about is a security concept uh, known as uh, least privilege. And if you know what that is, raise your hand. It's something that you probably hear um, your IT people talk about or your IT friends, your security friends. And what the concept of least privilege is, is when we are configuring privilege or permissions for users for things that they can do on equipment or on the file server or the web server or whatever resources they need to access, is that we give the least amount of access that they need to perform their assigned duties and we do that to keep them safe to keep the resources safe to keep the company safe to keep everybody safe so think about that google that a little bit that is uh, the concept of least privilege so I want to thank you for coming to the very first security Saturday I hope you like it I hope you liked it I hope it was informative uh, if you like the video please give me a thumbs up Please subscribe, and if you want to know when I release my videos, hit that little uh, bell-looking icon so you'll get an email. Uh, like I said, we're going to go back to configuration videos this week, but then uh, Friday will be another uh, Knowledge Nugget. Security Saturday will happen again next Saturday. Uh, once again, thank you to all of my subscribers, and I will see you in the next video.